Hey guys, welcome to the video today. So in today's video, we are working on the 2006 Toyota Corolla. So yeah, here we are, you know, um, and yesterday I took my car to Walmart and I needed a new battery and I had them change my oil while I was there and I ended up getting some new tires, spent, you know, all sorts of money. They did a great job. I was happy getting my car back. I felt good about it. Felt like, okay, um, you know, everything's, you know, running good and I feel good about my car and like I can drive this around. And last night my wife and I were going to Target and we were on the freeway and as I'm hitting the acceleration and letting off the acceleration, the car was jerking a ton and it was like, okay, something's definitely not right here. Um, and then my wife noticed that the temperature gauge um, was going all over the place, you know, like it was just really, really uh, sporadically like bouncing back and forth. So my wife was able to capture this video while I was driving and you can see the temperature gauge there just bouncing all over the place. You know, it goes to cold and then eventually it goes back up to the middle, just, you know, very sporadic. So after doing a little bit of research, um, I came to find the most likely culprit is the ECT sensor, which is the coolant temperature sensor. Um, so that's what I decided to take a look at first. So I have the battery disconnected. I have some parts taken off like the valve cover and a hose from the air filter. It was not hard to get to this part. I'll show you, you know, um, you know how I got here. So in case you end up in the same situation, uh, you know how to get to this point. But let's take a closer look at the, the up close area and the ECT sensor. All right, guys, so right in the middle of the screen there is the ECT sensor, and I'm going to put an arrow there just so you know what I'm talking about. Uh, and the gray part is where the wiring harness plugs into, and the wiring harness for it is right there, and we'll talk about that more in just a second. Um, so what I was trying to do is I was trying to get down in here so I could test the ECT sensor before I replaced it because there is a little bit of work that goes into replacing it. So I just wanted to make sure that it was bad. Um, and to get to this point, what I had to do is disconnect the battery here, um, take off the valve cover, and I got that right down here. There's just two 10 millimeter bolts that hold that in place. And then I had to remove uh, the hose from the air filter just so I had some room to work in there. Um, and then there's a couple additional hoses uh, right there that you had to disconnect uh, from the main hose here and then a uh, wiring harness here too. And that just, you know, you just push this down and pull it out. And for the hoses, there's these pinch clamps here and you just move those back and then you can wiggle the hose off. So, um, yeah, so what happened was one of the other things I wanted to check was the wiring harness because when I was doing my research, I came across an article that indicated maybe the wiring harness uh, could be the issue too. Um, and so sure enough, we come down in here. You can see, can you guys see that? Let me pull this back a little. You can see right there, the copper piece of that wire is, is sticking out of it. <laughs> uh, the wire itself is all frayed. So um, that is more than likely our culprit right there. So I need to get that repaired. So um, let me get my, uh, you know, my different electrical connectors. I'm gonna, you know, have to cut this back a little bit, um, you know, and, and get that fixed up. And then I will be back and show you the work that I did and we'll go from there. All right, guys, so I got the repair done. Um, I got some crimp connectors on there and heat shrink tubing and cleaned it all up. Um, now I'm ready to plug it back in and get everything put back together um, and verify that it works. Um, those were the crimp connectors I used and this is the style of heat shrink tubing I used. This one's a little bit bigger, but I, you know, the smaller ones I used up already, but just wanted to show you guys what I was using. So, um, and that's what it came out looking like there. So I'm going to go ahead and get this plugged back in um, and get everything put back together. All right, so I got the air filter hose back in here and um, I wanted to show you guys in case you ended up in the same spot. But there's a screw here and a screw here that you loosen and that'll allow you to, to get the hose out. But there's some other hoses and electrical connectors you have to disconnect first. 
This hose here just pulled right out. Let me get you a better look back here so you can see the other hoses and electrical connector. So there are two hoses back here, one here and one here. And uh, these clamps, you just pinch together and move them down and then pull this hose and this hose off. There's an electrical connector here. You just push down on it and then, you know, on the clip here and then pull it out. And then there's a clip here. And once you remove all that, then you can, you know, wiggle this hose right out. But um, let me go ahead and get the valve cover back on and the battery reconnected. And let's take this thing for a test drive and see how it works. All right, guys, I have everything back together. Let's take it for a test drive here. Um, you know, I have high hopes for this fix, and I hope so because this fix is easier than doing the ECT sensor. Um, if I do have to end up doing that, I got to drain coolant, and, and you know, it's a little bit more involved. So uh, I'm thinking with what we saw that this is definitely uh, what's going on with the car. So let me take it for a test drive. I'll be back, and we'll see how well it did. All right, guys, so I just got done taking this for a test drive. I'm back at home, parked outside of the house. And yes, by the way, it's 100 degrees. It's supposed to get to like 112 or something like that today. Just super, super crazy hot. But uh, yeah, so I uh, took it for a good long ride on the freeway and no issues whatsoever. Um, you can see that the temperature gauge is holding steady there. Um, once it warmed up, it held steady in the middle there the entire drive. I had no issues with acceleration. Um, and also my AC was working. That was another issue that uh, my wife and I were having yesterday when all this stuff was going on is um, it was starting to blow warm air. So I knew something was up with the, the coolant system. So um, let's head back under the hood for a final review and recap. All right, guys. Well, in this case, that was it. Um, and uh, I'm glad it was because, uh, you know, it was actually a little bit more work than I anticipated. So, um, you know, a, a crazy thermostat gauge, issues with acceleration, you know, jerking as I was pushing on the gas and letting off the gas issues with the um, air conditioner and you know blowing warm air just all sorts of different things going on that um, you know led back to a, a wire harness that was damaged and how it got damaged I don't know or how long it's been damaged who knows but it started causing some severe problems uh, yesterday so um, I hope if you guys find yourself in a similar situation this video helped out in some way Please like, subscribe, and comment. I appreciate you guys, and thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Have a good one. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, and comment, and if you have the time, check out these other great videos.